We have a question from Dave today, and Dave writes, Hey, Ted, wanted to say thanks for the latest series of shows concerning photography degrees, not working for free, and how to get experience. You haven't yet addressed the burning question, though. How do you get work? I currently work a day job that pays the bills, but I would rather be doing what I'm passionate about. I know the pro market is competitive, but it can't be impossible to break into. I've shot a few events and some small portrait sessions, so I have some experience to play off of, but how do photographers take the next step into the professional market? Keep up the great work on the show, Dave. Dave, you have asked the mother of all questions. This is the uh, probably the most asked question in the world of anybody who has ever thought about entering the photography market as a profession. And it is tough, as we all know, and I want... I want to be very real about what we talk about today, and some of it is not easy to hear, but at the same time, I do want to be encouraging as well, so hang with me a little bit as I try to go through this. Um, I also want to give a disclaimer up front. I make my living doing this show, so I don't make my living right now as a photographer in the traditional sense of clients and service-based relationships. I have done freelance work before. It's been a while. I did that for about seven years, and then I left. After doing seven years, I started working at the Dallas Museum of Art, and I was there full-time for the next seven years, and I was head of digital media, which included doing both photography and video. And I had an in-house job is typically what we call that. And I left that in July of last year to do this show full time. And that's where I am today. So just as a disclaimer, I don't make my, my living in that traditional sense. But I want to come back around to that because that kind of is part of my answer to this question, I think. But I want to be realistic about this and very realistic because photography, as we all know, is tough. And some of you may know Brian Richmond, who leaves comments on the videos every now and then. Brian is a friend of mine. Uh, he teaches at the University of North Texas. We've talked about this before. In fact, he left a comment in one of the recent videos that you that Dave made a mention to in here uh, about how realistic this is because he sees it at the college level. And I looked for some hard number data on this and I had trouble coming up with anything. But if you think about, just for a second, how many universities there are in the world that have an arts program, that have something where somebody can study photography, and there are a lot. Um, if you combine that with how many community colleges there are all over the world, how many two-year trade schools there are across the world, and then how many students are in all of those schools who graduate every year, that is the competition. That is the brand new competition that comes in every year. Some of these people make it, only very few. And I, I know that's kind of daunting, but then also you realize how many people probably realize you don't have to have a degree and they drop out and try and do it that way. And that's even more people that come into this. So there's a huge influx. There's an article that I found on AIGA's website um, and they were talking about, you know, what is the problem? Is it too many people or is it they're not equipped with the correct skills that they need? And they have a very good point with that, but the real problem is the diminishing opportunities that are out there. And I'll talk about that in a second too, because this business is changing constantly. And so that's kind of what you're up against. Against. And you, most people don't realize that being a photographer and having wonderful skills at photography and being a business person and being successful running a business are two completely different things. And when you run photography as a business, there's all these other things you have to do that don't have anything to do with creativity or taking pictures or working in Lightroom or doing traditional work or anything. I mean, it's all pounding on doors, trying to find new clients, trying to sell your work, competing with other photographers, uh, trying to deal with getting paid sometimes, trying to deal with all those things that come along with running a business. I don't think it's something you necessarily need to go get a business degree to learn, but I don't think people are realistic about needing that skill set when they come out and they realize that it's not a lot of fun and they really don't have the stomach for it and that's why so many people do not become photographers. It's a brutal business. Um, if you consider how things were before the end of the 1980s. That was different too. Uh, back then, there was an enormous amount of work being done. Corporations would do annual reports, they would do brochures, and there were a ton of photographers back in the 70s and 80s that made their living doing travel photography for brochures and annual reports. Annual reports were a big one. Um, you couldn't just go download a picture of an oil rig in Thailand. You had to go shoot it, and they had to send somebody out there to do it. And along in the 1980s came a few people who figured out how to do a business for stock photography. And this changed everything because somebody now doesn't have to hire a photographer and send them across the globe and pay them a bunch of money. They can now go to a stock website where there already is that image that they need for whatever it is. They can download it for $30 and they're done. And that's good business, certainly, but it definitely has killed the photography market on a commercial level in a major way. And it's really sad to see this. The opportunities are seriously diminishing out there. And there's an influx of people that think they want to do this and think they can do it. 
And that's kind of where this friction starts happening on the professional world anyway. One thing I want to say this, and, and you said it can't be impossible in here. Dave said that in his email. And you're right, it's not impossible. I have several friends who are doing very well. And I kind of want to talk about that for a minute and what they're doing. Um, my friend Wade, who I did a podcast that was an audio thing for a while called The Photography Show with, he's a very successful photographer. He's doing wonderful in his career. Uh, he shoots mainly architectural work. So what he has done is he's found an avenue of something that is not going to be replaced by a stock image that he can break into working with architects and, and firms when they finish a building they need to have pictures taken for their portfolio and Wade will go do that um, and so he's found a niche in that that is possible and I think that's a really important thing to go for um, another friend of mine Dave Wellbelove who I met because he was a fan of this show and I met him in the UK a couple years ago when I met him he was in a similar position that this email is where he both named Dave it was not the same Dave but he had had a position where he, he did not like his day job, he was pulling his hair out, and he decided he wanted to be a photographer for a living, and he's doing it. He even remodeled his home studio, uh, turned his garage into a, into a photo studio, and he's amazing. He does really cool things, and so it can be done. People are doing it. And I think what you have to realize, though, is everything in life, my dad used to say this when I was a kid, and I, it stuck with me ever since, everything in life comes with a price tag. The question is, are you willing to pay that price to get to what you want to do? And by price, he doesn't mean money. Uh, price can be something like time. It can be uh, hustling. It can be jumping through hoops. It can be dealing with politics sometimes. It can be all the things that stand between you and what it is you want to do. Sometimes it's understanding that you're not going to make a lot of money and you're going to starve for a while. Those are the prices we pay to do things in life. And it's really important to step back and look at what the price is to pay for whatever it is that you want to do. What do you want to go into as a photographer? Uh, and finding people that are willing to hire you to do that it sounds simple, it's not, it's really hard, but you have to be realistic about what that price is. If you're realistic about that and that price is still worth paying, it's something that you're going to be passionate about and be happy about, then by all means, you're probably in the right place to do it. But I don't think a lot of people are very honest about that. And the reason that I'm kind of being, you know, giving you the dark answer on here that's traditionally given is because it's really hard to encourage people to do this. There have been several lawsuits lately with smaller trade schools in California, I won't say who, but there were some instances where recruiters were basically telling people, hey, if you major in photography here, our graduates earn this price level a year doing work here and here and here. So they were off offering placement in the job field, but also salaries connected to it. These people should have run the other way. A school can't promise that. They have no idea. They don't know. And that's the really hard part about this. Now, having said all that, I think there is a positive side to this too, and this is the advice that I want to give you guys today, and I want to talk about redefining possibilities. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor real fast, and then when we come back, I want to talk about how to redefine possibility. I want to take a second and give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at QuickBooks.com. If you are a small business owner like I am, or if you're a freelancer, then you probably know just how much fun taxes can be at the end of the year, and you know that it's important to track all of your expenses and your income so that you're ready when it's time to file. The most important thing that you can do is use the right tools for the job. And if you've ever heard of QuickBooks, you know they are one of the industry leaders in finance accounting software, and they now have plans that are tailored specifically to freelancers and small business owners. For a low monthly fee, you can track all of your income, sort your expenses between personal and business related, and depending on your plan, you can even invoice clients right from QuickBooks. Having the right tool is essential to make your work easier when tax time comes around. And now, you can try QuickBooks absolutely free. They have a deal for Art of Photography viewers right now that will give you 30 days to check out QuickBooks and see if it's right for you. Just head over to tryselfemployed.com slash AOP and start your free trial today. That link once again is tryselfemployed.com slash AOP. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks once again to the folks at QuickBooks for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. I want to talk about the concept of redefining possibilities because I think this is important and I think it's the key to a lot of this. When you think about possibilities and from a professional standpoint as a photographer, what possibilities are out there and what avenues you could go after about pursuing a career, a lot of these possibilities we think of are built on pretty antiquated models, hence the, the, the business shrinking and the market shrinking and less room for more people. A lot of there was a way that photographers made money in the 1980s that has changed now. You know, you don't a client or an agency doesn't fly a photographer generally around the world uh, to shoot a oil derrick in Thailand when they can go get a stock image. That business has changed, uh, and I think that holds true for the 1970s and the 60s and the 50s. I mean, if you take Henri Cartier-Bresson, who is arguably one of the great minds of photography. 
and you took him out of his element and put him in the modern day, sometimes I wonder if you would even know who he was. And that is nothing to say against him or his skills as a photographer, but this is a different world and it's a whole different place and we do things differently. And shooting the way he shot and the market that he shot with it could be a whole different story if because he was a person of his time and it's really important that we recognize that and i realize that moving forward is hard i realize that the future and what the unknown is difficult and that's okay too and i hate the word entrepreneurial but it is important to think in those terms and i'll give you an example and i told you i'd come back around to this but right now i'm doing this show for a living and a lot of that was by design and a few years ago, you know, when I started this, it was just to do something fun. And as I got an audience and eventually got advertising because I had some expenses associated with it, and it started turning into a business, I recognized that there was a possibility there. Now, have I have arrived at this? Am I screamingly successful and making millions of dollars? No, I'm not. But I'm really happy doing what I'm doing right now and I'm making it happen and it's possible. But I realized that there was a very unconventional career path of doing online video on photography back in 2008. And it's not that unusual today. There other photography channels and other people who are doing what I'm doing here but I realized that was a possibility and for me it's great because all the things that I love about photography I get to do I get to take pictures of whatever it is I'm interested in I don't have deadlines necessarily I can talk about photography I can share my passion for the history of photography I can talk about photographers I can do interviews with people it's all up to me and it's a complete creative direction from my standpoint. I don't work with art directors. I don't work with clients. And those are things that I didn't always hate, but I liked them less than being able to do what I do now. And so I was able to see an opportunity there for something that was very unconventional. In fact, it was really weird. The first time I started telling people that I was gonna consider doing this for a living, they're like, you're gonna do what for a living? You can do that? You know, I mean, it was really different and unconventional. And so it's important to start looking at other avenues that are possibilities as well. And that's just one example um, of how, what, how I'm able to leverage what I'm passionate about and be able to do something with it. And I think that's what everybody has to look for. And I think that's really, really important. I'm gonna end with this because I think this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. And um, I actually heard this. This is a quote from Thomas Edison. And I heard Johnny Bench use the quote when I heard him speak one time. And it's interesting because he was talking, it, it, it deals with opportunities and recognizing them when they come around. And Edison once said, that most people don't recognize opportunities because they come dressed in overalls and look like work. I repeat that. Most people don't recognize opportunities when they come along because they come dressed in overalls and they look like work. And that, that couldn't be more truthful. Um, sometimes there's a possibility to do something, but most of the competition that you're going to have out there is pretty lazy. Don't be lazy yourself. Recognize the opportunities and work at them. I wasn't handed this show. This has been a ton of work. There was a huge price tag that came with this. And I've been willing to do it because I'm happy doing it. And that's what the key is. And I had an opportunity there and was willing to do the work. And you can do it too. I think anyone can do it. Most people don't. So that's where I'm going to end it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography for more updates, all the latest, greatest videos direct, delivered directly to your inbox. And uh, once again, thank you guys. We have hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm so excited about that. And that is not me. That is you guys. And I owe everything to you. Um, this has been an amazing show. And you guys are the experience. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.